Tarzan and the Diamond of Asher. Tarzan, with Darno and two hunters, is leading a jungle expedition in search of Brian Gregory. In the party are Brian Gregory's father and sister, Helen. Magra, a mysterious Eurasian girl, is also with the Tarzan Gregory safari. It is through Magra that Atan Tom hopes to get possession of a map showing the location of the forbidden city of Asher. In the camp on the bank of a tributary of the Ubangi River, the white group is watching a native ceremony when Larson, the sweet hunter, spies a giant crocodile coming toward them. With his gun ready, Larson heads to the monster. He slips and falls directly in the path of the approaching reptile. That fool, Tarzan. Oh, somebody help them. They will both be killed. Bigger! Bigger! With a mighty bound, Tarzan hurls himself into the air to land directly in front of the charging crocodile. Home flecked jaws open wide and snap shut with a sickening crunch. Like lightning, the ape man leaps aside. His powerful hands flash out, clamping themselves like iron bands about the girl's jaws. The huge saurian's bloodshot eyes roll in mad agony. Its giant tail lashes seriously. Every muscle in its long body strains, begging to break the death grip of this man thing. Slowly, relentlessly, Tarzan twists and bends the mammoth head aside and back. Back! Behind him, the ape man's friends watch in spellbound silence. Tarzan's feet grip the ground. Under his glistening skin, the muscles stand out like steel cables. He gathers himself for a supreme effort. One terrific twisting lunge. Like a fusillade of pistol shots, the crocodile's vertebrae crack sharply. Out of Tarzan's hand, the monster slips to the ground. Lifeless. Good heavens! He broke that thing's neck. The strength of ten giants. Look, now he picks Larson up just like a baby. Oh, come those boys down and get them back to their quarters. Yeah, fool. Hey, Dono, come look at Larson's leg. He's conscious now. No, no, there are no bones broken on the knee. And not a sign of a sprain. Good. Now get up, Larson. Try to walk. Yeah. So... Why, your leg's all right. Yeah, sure. It's been all right now. But they wouldn't have no legs at all if it ain't been for you, Tarzan. They come to just in time to see that croc drop dead. Uh, what happened? Nothing, Larson. Gimla was angry and had to be killed. But the way you killed him. I remember once before, my friend, you fought the crocodile, but that was in the water and you used your knife. You mean he finished this one? With his bare hands, Mon Larson, avec les mains. There was no time for my knife. A second more, and Gimel would have had you. Just like that. Yes, Larson, just like that. It was done so quickly, it was all over before I realized it. Tarzan jumped and landed in front of the brute. He clamped his paws shut with his hands and held them. Then, oh, it was beautiful. He lifted the thing half off the ground and twisted its head. Until it snapped. Magra has the right word. It was terrible, but beautiful. Tarzan, I don't like to talk about this, but but I go to fire for you. Here be in my hand. Forget it, Larson. You do the same for me if you had the chance. 
Meanwhile, Wolf and the witch doctor have quieted the natives. As the blacks return to their shelters, Wolf motions to the wrinkled old sorcerer. He follows the German to a far side of the boma. Bully, make big boy sleep tonight in Mamba Nagoma, huh? Bully, make much medicine. Mbuli Nakuba, doctor man. Mbuli shall be fixing for strong medicine. Much strong bang chai. Yeah, it's fine stuff. I want some, you got? Bang chai bad for white man. Make him sleep long time. Never mind that. I know how to use it. Here, Mbuli, fill this flask. Bring my bang chai to me. I give ten pesa. Can do. Wanna be careful? Give too much, white man no wake up. Don't worry. Go, fill the flask, no you? Wolf watches the old man as he walks to the cauldron over the ceremonial fire. A weasened little magician fills the flask, tucks it out of sight, and hurries back to the German. Yeah, mbang chai for buona. No give too much. White man sleep long time. Yeah, I know. Here's your money. Listen, Mumbuli. You and the boys get good pay on this safari. Mm, pretty good. Same like always. You like catch on plenty money more? <coughs> plenty chumbi? Uh, plenty salt? Can do, Buana. Good. He big Buana. Kudare Buana. He come behind this safari. Today, walk back along same trail. He want Umbuli and these boys come along with him. What far we go? Never mind it. You talk, talk along, boys. Get ready for runaway. I tell you when to go. Then you take all supplies, all chakula. It all belongs to you, Umbuli Sabi. Umbuli Sabi. When you get back there with that rich Hotali Buani Safari, you get plenty whiskey. Mm, you like? Yeah, Mubuli like. Good, the Jemahio. We go now. No, nine. Not till I talk, talk you. And remember, no fighting, no killing. You and the boy should uh, disappear in the jungle. The two conspirators separate. Mbuli to vanish silently among the tents of the bearers, Wolf to stride rapidly toward the group of whites around the fire. At the edge of the circle of firelight, he pauses to watch Helen Gregory and her father. He sees the girl pass a folded paper to the old gentleman. A grim smile touches the German's lips. He knows where the map is now. Nonchalantly, he approaches the group and drops down beside Magra. This Magra, he knows got the map now. What happened to the natives, Wolf? Turned in? Uh, yeah, here, Kinnickety. Uh, they're all asleep by this time. Did you hear, Makra? Yes. How do you know? I just saw the girl give it to her father. Well, how are you going to get it? Oh, I won't hurt him at all. He'll just uh, go to sleep and uh, I get what I want. Asleep? What do you mean? I mean, uh, well, never mind what I mean. But the old man won't be harmed. If he is wolf, Tarzan will kill you. Don't, don't worry. Nothing will happen to him. But I'll have that map. And then the diamonds. You and me, huh? Now, just as soon as the fire dies down a little, Magra, I am going to pretend to go to bed. You stay here. And if anyone leaves the fire, you start to sing. Understand? I understand. Meanwhile, back in the Tom Safari, the Atan makes clear his plans to Lal Tusk and explains to him what his duties will be in carrying them out. <laughs> Lal Tusk will soon have the opportunity to get the action he has been longing for. <laughs> How so, Atan? We shall fill Gregory's blacks with strong drink. They will be told the members of the Gregory Safari are children of the devil possessed of evil spirits. <laughs> Do you begin to understand, eh? <laughs> Lal Tusk is not without imagination. When the blacks have been aroused to the proper pitch of madness, the Atan will place himself at their head 
and lead them out to capture the Gregories and their friends. Right, my friend, in every detail except one. Lal Tusk <laughs> perhaps does not understand. I see that you do not exactly. You shall lead the blacks. And the Atan, where will ye be? I? <laughs> I shall be with the witch doctors in the rear, directing the uh, arrangements, yes. <laughs> I am to trust myself to a crowd of drink-crazed blacks? No, Atan Tom. Lead your own, madam. So. So. You have forgotten, Sidi Belabas. But that where I saved your worthless life from the English who were about to shoot you as a spy, eh? Why, you unbelieving dog, you owe your life to me a dozen hundred times over. Uh, enough, master. Lull Tusk leads the attack. Uh, better. Much better. <laughs> I am glad to see you so eager to serve me, Lull Tusk. And uh, share in the riches of our share. Oh, you are a brave man. <laughs> in the Gregory camp, the flames of the campfires are burning low. Larson is recounting, for the benefit of Mr. Gregory, one of his jungle exploits. Tarzan sits watching the Swede, a half-smile playing over his features as he listens. A few feet away... Helen and Darno are comparing notes on the Frenchman's beloved Paris. Wolf's keen eyes note how wholly the two groups are engrossed in their own conversations. Slowly, he backs out of the light circle. Once in the deep shadow, he moves quickly to Gregory's tent. He takes down the canteen, empties into it the contents of a flask, and hangs it back. A few quick strides, and he is in his own tent. From the corners of her eyes, Magra has closely followed the German's every move. She rises casually and walks away into the shadows. Then quickly, noiselessly, to Wolf's tent. She lifts the canteen from its hook. A few steps, and she has reached Gregory's shelter. Here she removes the poisoned canteen, exchanges it for Wolf's untainted one, and, returning to the German's tent, hangs the...